Hey guys, it's me, EOD Gamer here, and we're back with another analysis video for Honkai Star Rail. And today we're going to be talking about Yu Kong, uh, what she does, and where does she fit in the current meta, given that the current Harmony roster is already so stacked. Uh, she's up against very steep competition. I'm going to highlight some differences for this character and maybe where she will fall in line with the rest of them too. Uh, first things first, let's talk about what she exactly does. Uh, her function, she's an imaginary Harmony character. Long story short, if you guys don't want to know too much details, basically she has has a passive buff of Roaring Bow Strings that has a couple of turn limits. Once each of your ally characters take a turn, she loses some of that damage buffing. So what that means and what that implies is characters who move very fast and don't really utilize uh, a lot in terms of their turn, like maybe if you build for a Speed Zealer, will not get the full um, maximized value of her kit since she buffs uh, turn based on turns. Characters that act outside of their turn order, say maybe for example Clara, you have Jing Yuan, you have Himiko, Herta, all these kind of characters will have longer uptime on her buffs since they don't, they naturally like don't build too much for speed, like uh, longer turn orders as well. So those are some uh, things to consider. I think that she's a really strong character. She also does good amounts of imaginary break damage. She probably is, if she's really going to be free in 1.2, some say, uh, she's going to be the only access to imaginary we currently have in the game. Of course, the other two options are Welt as well as Lota, who are gated behind that 5-star paywall. Let's talk about how she fits into the current meta. Being a Harmony character, why would you run Yu Kong rather than any of these other Harmony characters? And I think I split the categories up into three different sections and we were able to see more clearly. I'll be talking more in terms of other analysis uh, in a bit, but let's talk first in terms of function of a Harmony character. Notice I have here damage buff outside of this, the, the three boxes because all of them, all four Harmony characters do do some sort of like damage buff in their kit as well. So that's why I left it out. All of them do damage buffing. So where does Yu Kong fall in this line? I think she falls somewhere in between uh, being a breaker, imaginary breaker, as well as being an, a specific elemental type buffer. So this is uh, her niche. This is where she shines. She does good amounts of break damage for imaginary. She, her ultimate does good break damage. Her basic attack also does good amounts of break damage as well. Very, very strong uh, if you don't have any other imaginary character. And a lot of us know now we are very frustrated at monsters with imaginary weakness because if you don't have well pretty much in early parts of 1.1, you have no other choice. You just, the, the imaginary is basically not an element you need to think about at this point of time. Uh, other than that, she does single type elemental buffing in one of her major traces as well. So it's going to be like uh, the best in slot imaginary buffer uh, character if you're running a full imaginary team, which we'll talk about in a little bit later on. Uh, of course, I know this three categories uh, they basically are represented for example by light cones you have planetary rendezvous here you have dance 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 with turn play, uh, place manipulation you also have this one i can't really remember i think it's memories of the past or something like that i can't really remember this exact name but this one basically increases the break damage that is, is dealt uh, back break effect of uh, characters and it's a harmony like cone so it's interesting that she can consider a lot of these options as well since her kit is quite uh, versatile in that sense so the other characters, I think the closest character that will be uh, similar to her will be maybe a character like Esther. I'll put her in the center because uh, Esther does have a bit of turn manipulation. She gives uh, speed buffing and that's considered as turn play, turn uh, based manipulation. Elemental buffing, she does, does gives like fire bonus damage and she also go, does good break damage off the side as well. So I think the closest competition, Yukong, will definitely be a character like Esther. They both uh, fulfill similar roles, although one is fire, one of them is imaginary. There are other characters, for example, like Bronya here. Bronya is very strong, uh, but it's mostly like the best in slot turn place, turn uh, place manipulation here. She does a lot of attack buffing. We are not talking about the order of like how strong they are in different categories. I'm just telling you like what they contribute to their particular team. So don't think like, oh, because Bronya is only in one box here, means she's the worst. And that's not true. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just talking about the different aspects for illustration purposes for us to see in general what do they do. Tingyun, of course, over here, uh, she will also fall very similar in line in a category like uh, turn manipulation. Elemental buffing, uh, in order to fall in this category, uh, I know all of them can fall if you just switch the light cone over and they will all have that category and that's what makes Harmony characters so versatile. But I think uh, elemental buffing really means like in their kit itself, they have some sort of way to buff uh, their same type that uh, damage for example, and these two characters generally are more focused on turn manipul manipulation. I put Ting Yun as turn manipulation because of her energy restoration. Energy restoration kinda is a pseudo 
turn manipulation because if you can get them maxed out in terms of their turn manipulation it's going to be uh, they can immediately act so i will do consider it as as part over here uh, i think yukong stands out more if you want a little bit more uh, damage coming from your imaginary character a bit more contribution to break uh, imaginary weaknesses as well since for those of you who don't know imaginary currently offers like one of the better break effects where you delay the enemy and you also give them a speed down when they are imaginary uh, broken as well so some things to consider now let's take a look at a second chart which i think you guys Guys will find a uh, much more interesting as well and this is really a chart here of the four characters and i link them to like five star dps's who i think are going to be very used really well with that particular character there's a lot on screen but let's go through like some of them starting with yukong here i think uh she's going to be very strong for a pure imaginary team in future she works very well with like characters like well Luota, if you want maybe already like a double imaginary uh, they both do decent amounts of damage on the side uh, offensive in terms of the three of them already contribute quite good amounts of offense i have no idea why Hung is here i might be mistaken in terms of this graphic but uh, yeah any other imaginary damage dealer might of definitely benefit from her in future as well if they are being released and of course some other characters in terms of who i think work well with who uh, for Esther, I think Himiko probably will work very well with Esther. Uh, but don't get me wrong, everyone can really work well with almost anyone. How many characters are just so versatile? I had to put like one in, the, in, in, in one of the linkages just to have for illustration purposes. So don't infer this out of context and like don't just screenshot and say, oh, uh, Himiko is best in slot and stuff like that for Esther and, and whatever not. Uh, Kafka, I think for Kafka will work best with uh, Esther out of all of them because she does benefit a lot from speed attack as well since DOT skills more with attack and uh, she doesn't really care too much about being a hyper carry in the team so a character for example like Bronya as well as Tingyun might not care too much or she might not care too much for their hyper carry type buffing that they offer uh, of course these two being hyper carries in nature they work very well with a large roster here who uh, uh, definitely benefit a lot from hyper carry style of course Clara is a little bit more uh, uh, suitable with Tingyun because of the energy she provides Clara to keep the uptime on the ultimate ability. Blade here uh, definitely would appreciate a same type buffer which opens the door for planetary rendezvous in future as well. And of course, uh, because he scales a lot with HP, uh, Bronya gives a lot of damage buffing, crit damage buffing, which he utilizes a lot more as well. So don't infer this out of context. It's just a very quick uh, illustration of what different characters can contribute. I think this is a very helpful chart uh, to show you in a big picture of the five-star DPS characters as well, of what, uh, what, who can work with who and stuff like that. Other than that, uh, if you are finding value in this video so far, do give me a like and subscribe for more of such future content. Now we're going to talk briefly about team compositions and I think this is probably the most important part of like the video. Uh, I think why, where Yukong stands out and she will really be very interesting to work with is in a imaginary team. For example, you have uh, well, you have Lota. Of course, it's a little bit expensive uh, for now. You can run a full imaginary team and maybe you have one more imaginary character here. Uh, uh, for example, let's just put Danheng since he's like the easiest character to reach on top. It's convenient to just drag him across a full imaginary team like that with a, like a dps and a aoe dps here in well together with a lot of sustain and harmony buffing i think this is a very very strong team of course it's, it's pretty expensive but of course i think the most interesting thing about yukong is she definitely opens up the opportunity to run a double uh, harmony character combination because she acts as a, a somewhat of a damage dealing unit as well on her own she buffs outside of turn order so she you are able to use for example a super hyper carry style with uh, yukong tingyun maybe even yukong and bronya for a bit of turn place manipulation since she uh, based on the character's turns if she goes she activates a roaring bowstring bronya goes bumps up the uh, the dps the hyper carry dps immediately they will have like every single one of their buffs up and I think it's a really, really interesting combo to do. I'm going to be doing now a full guide on Yukong team compositions. And I'll link in the video card right here. Or you can check it back on the channel as well. We do this every single patch. So like and subscribe for more such future content. And thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video.